Hey YouTube, good morning. Here's Heiko. It's Monday morning, 9.30 a.m. Sitting here contemplating life. No, actually, I'm really excited to show you my new microphone. So instead of just going for the greatest microphone ever devised by man, the Shure SM7B that a lot of YouTubers use, I always have to look for alternatives. There are a couple microphones, of course, that uh, can be made to sound like an SM7B. Some EQing, maybe some windscreen and a pop filter, and you can make an SM57 sound like a SM7B. I didn't want that, or of course I wanted it, but I wanted to make it happen cheaper. So the microphone that I'm currently using is an uh, SL75C by Behringer. Goes right into my Euphoria UMC 204 HD audio interface. Uh, the gain is set at about 75% to get a decent recording volume and uh, works pretty well. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I wanted to make this sound more like an SM57. The SM57 has a little transformer installed inside the microphone and I added one to this one. Why? I have no idea. It didn't really fix anything. Nothing was broken with this microphone. So I wanted to improve uh, my audio. I wanted better equipment. And instead of buying an SM7B, I was looking for all kinds of alternatives that are cheaper, but they can do the job just as well. I came across this microphone here, which is the grandfather to the Shure SM57. This one here is the 545SD Unidyne 3 microphone, which was really an uh, instrument microphone in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And Shure just recently reissued or re-released some of those classic microphones that they used to make back in the days that were really staples on the stage back in those days. And a lot of famous singers and, and musicians used those microphones. So they came out with this whole collection of, of um, classic collection microphones. This here, the 545. Then um, there is the 55SH. There's the 565 and the 520. And they were all re-released with modern manufacturing techniques and whatnot. And um, this is literally the grandfather to an SM57. The major difference between this one and the SM57 is the capsule. It uses a different capsule, even though the exterior of the microphone is almost identical other than the silver. It has an on-off switch here on the side, which is not available on an SM57 and here in the back where the XLR port is, um, you can take this out and there is a little um, uh, connection that you can swap around and you are changing the impedance of this microphone. So somewhere in here, they have a resistor in there uh, when you swap the connection around, which is really doable. I, I already tried it out. You can switch it from around 150 ohms to about 600 ohms and a lot of, uh, studio technicians they do that to um, impedance match the microphone to their recording equipment with modern equipment it's not super necessary but some people really still pay attention to this kind of stuff so this is a brand new microphone sold for about 91 dollars so it's slightly cheaper than, than an sm57 and then all the accessories that you can get for an sm57 you can of course use for this one as well so uh, right here, it's a Shure windscreen, an A81WS foam windscreen. And this is actually not made for the or not meant for the SM57 since the SM57 or the 545SD, uh, they are instrument microphones. So they usually don't need a windscreen unless you really want to uh, use it for vocal performance. Uh, so this one is actually really made for the SM81, I want to say. 
So people always say SM57 instrument microphone and this one here instrument microphone. But a lot of presidential speeches and other speeches, professors and whatnot, important people have been recorded with SM57 or before the SM57 came out with this one here, the 545SD. And um, when it's outdoors, they use this massive windscreen. When it's indoors, it's this small one here. This is an uh, A2WS. Yeah, it's an A2WS. This one here is actually designed and made for the SM57. It has a little um, metal ring in the back and a screw, and so you can lock it onto the microphone, doesn't come off. Um, works really well, but if you want to take care of most of your plosives and maybe even your siblings a little bit, put this massive thing on it. Um, there's a thick foam layer on the outside, and then inside is, is some sort of other material. I can't rip this out. Um, so it has multi-layer of material. This kills quite a bit of the output performance of the microphone. The 545SD is already a very low sensitivity microphone with about negative 58 decibels. So you definitely need a audio interface or a preamp or recording equipment that has quite a bit of gain to offer. And um, my UMC 204 HD can drive this microphone, but as you go up in your gain settings, you are also amplifying all the um, noise floor, the, the noise that the microphone produces internally and the electronics produce internally. The higher you go in your gain, the more amplification you add to all those noises. So um, with my audio interface here, when I get to about... Um, let's say 80, 85%, it really gets pretty hummy. Uh, some people say it's the preamp, but it's really not the preamp. It's the, the noise that enters the preamp that gets amplified. So with this one here, uh, since it is such a low sensitivity microphone, I, I had to come up with something. And then a lot of people use a cloud lifter, a fat head. Uh, they use some sort of preamp. And um, online, I found a, a few reviews on these really cheap alternatives, it's Clark Technique Mic Booster CT1. They also make a inline preamp that looks more like a little box. It's the CM1. I'm assuming the internals are identical. So I added this little $35 device to my $91 454SD Unidyne 3 microphone. Just like this inline, it clicks right in the back of the microphone. And then, like I said, the reason why on top of a uh, low sensitivity microphone adding this huge windscreen, uh, you really lose a little bit of the output performance. Uh, but I put this together and I'm really impressed with the sound, the, the um, low noise floor that I'm getting. So when I'm recording at my, my new um, gain settings that I need to to drive this i have such a low noise flow there's really absolutely no no noise that's being recorded as long as i make sure my air conditioning doesn't kick on while i'm recording and my dogs are outside the house it's it's amazing it's really quiet i have lots of headroom to to uh, boost this even more a little difficult to get this a81 ws onto an sm57 you gotta have a piece of plastic that you can roll up and then stick it into windscreen here like this. Kind of like a funnel. Stick this in and you stick your microphone in. And then you pull on the plastic as you push the microphone in. And then eventually you have the microphone in there and then you just have to get the plastic out of the way just like that that slides it on pretty well looks <laughs> yeah kind of interesting huh i guess everyone likes this uh broadcast microphone look like a road pot mic they they want style they want to look for for their studio but yeah i am really impressed about the sound quality that comes out of this package going into my relatively inexpensive audio interface. So now I switch to the 545SD made by Shure, this classic collection microphone together with my very inexpensive 
Clark Technique CT1, $35 inline preamp or microphone booster, and a $38 windscreen, also made by Shure, the A81WS. I am really excited about how the sound of my recordings has improved, just switching to this combo. When I first took the 545 SD out of the package and hooked it straight into my Euphoria UMC 204 HD and I had to crank the gain knob up to 90, 95%, I was a little disillusioned. I was like, man, you made a mistake again. You should have just bought the RE320 or the whatever SEV7 or any of those microphones that always get raving reviews online. But once I get this $35 little inline preamp and I realize how much clean gain it gives me and how much headroom I now have, I can even um, move away from my microphone and just give it a little bit more boost uh, or gain um, and still get a really decent recording out of it. And really the, the missing link, at least for my equipment, because my UMC 204 HD is a low budget audio interface, that once you crank it up, it gets a little on the hummy side. Uh, lots of humming in the recording once you are at 95%. Once I put this little um, inline preamp in there, turned on the Phantom Power 48 volts, now it's such a clean recording that it barely needs any EQ. I mean, you guys can tell me otherwise. Put it in the comments down below that it sounds terrible. But uh, I am so happy switching from a $25 Behringer microphone that was trying to be an SM57 to the actual grandfather of the SM57. The Unidyne 3 capsule puts out some amazing sounds and it, it fits together so well. And um, I used to use um, one of those shock mounts, one of those here that made the situation here just a little bit more clunky. I actually went to the regular um, microphone mount that came with a 545 SD. Here on my desk, I usually don't bang on my desk while I'm talking to you guys. The shock mount is gone, made a little bit more streamlined here. Uh, it doesn't interfere with the on off switch on the microphone. This windscreen on top of this instrument microphone, it takes care of all the plosives uh, it really blocks out all the unwanted breathing noises and um, maybe even some of my siblings. I think I have a fair amount of that. Yeah, check it out. Check out Sweetwater. They have all those products. The A81WS, the 545SD, and the Clock Technic CT1. And then even if you want to check out my uh, audio interface, which is a Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD, which is their best equipped two channel audio interface. And it's still very inexpensive. So a $150 microphone plus a $120 audio interface sounds like this. Please follow me along here on this channel. I'm still trying to find my way. I'm, I'm a little you know, all over the place. I do car repair, motorcycles, watch repair, brass instruments, home improvement project projects, and then suddenly I'm talking about recording gear. So I'm all over the place. I'm trying to get a little bit more organized and label my videos so that from the thumbnail, you can already tell what the video is going to be about. And uh, please follow along. Give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. That helps my channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.